What's up, everybody? It's the Alex Leak and Friends NFL Podcast back for another week. I'm your host, Alex Leak. We got Dustin on the show. What's up, Dustin? What's up? Thanks for having me. Good to have you on. Um, so this is the preseason, week two, 2021 NFL season. Everything's starting to heat up. Season right around the corner. Um, how are you? What, how excited are you for the season to get started? Oh, man, I am absolutely excited. There's so many different storylines with who's going to start at quarterback for certain teams, and this is one of the the most hyped years I'm ready for in a long time. Yeah, I can't wait for the season to start. The preseason has been a lot of fun and entertaining as well. Um, let's talk about, I mean, the Patriots played the Eagles in week two of the preseason blowout win. Cam Newton. Uh, not allowed to go to the, pay, the practice facility for like five days. Some miscommunication there. What's your thoughts on Cam Newton versus Mac Jones? Do you think Cam Newton starts the season as a starting quarterback? I do think that Newton start to see, starts the season as a starting quarterback. But if I was Bill Belichick, I would prefer Mac Jones just because from what I've seen watching him play, Mac Jones is a more accurate quarterback and mm-hmm. is getting passes to the receiver. If you watch Newton play, He's throwing them to their legs and throwing them over their head where they got to dive and stuff to catch the football. So pretty much what we're saying on Cam Newton is that he doesn't have it anymore as far as arm talent. Like he had the shoulder injuries and stuff, and he really hasn't bounced back. Um, maybe the writing on the wall, and maybe it'll be Mac Jones' job in New England sooner than later. Yeah, and I mean, uh, I give it – week two, week three, because I, I honestly don't see Newton being very accurate the first couple games of the season. And if he does, he surprises me. But I think we'll see Mac Jones sooner than later. I don't think it'll be that soon. I think I think it's something to keep an eye on. I think Mac Jones could end up finishing the year as a starter. But I still like Cam Newton. I think he could be in for a, back, a bounce back year. Um, you know, I, I think he still has some talent. He he has the running ability, especially in uh, the red zone and the goal line to go. You know, he has the ability to run in some touchdowns, use his legs. Mac Jones has a little bit of that too, but not the way Cam Newton does with the power run. Um, what about his know. ability to stay healthy and, and play all the games that he needs to play? You know, I mean, we haven't seen that since he was what, at Carolina, right? Yeah, that'll be key. I mean, last year, I, he played a lot of games last year. It was really, I think he stayed healthy for the most part. It was just COVID. Um, I, that'll be key. If Cam Newton gets hurt and Mac Jones gets in there, that might be the end of the Cam experience in New England because I don't think Mac Jones will give the job up once he gets it. Um, but I think Cam – Unless Cam gets hurt, I think he keeps the job all year and they make a playoff run. Um, the defense is going to be a lot better. There's more weapons on offense compared to last year. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, it's really – New England, I mean, I don't want to put – I don't want to force Mac Jones in there too early. I would rather r- ride it with Cam, who's still very capable – and then kind of let it let that quarterback situation work itself out by injury or performance. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I mean, I'm not saying Cam still don't have it. What I'm saying is from what I've seen from the preseason games on national television is that his throws are not as accurate as what Mac Jones is doing. You know, Jones is getting it there. Newton's getting it to where the receivers have to work extra hard to catch the ball. Yeah, I could see that. But Cam also is the veteran who has a better grasp of the offense and has the uh, the run threat that I don't think Mac Jones has quite the level of run threat that Cam has. So where you get better accuracy from Mac Jones, you get more versatility, more experience, veteran leadership from Cam. Um, and I think Bill Belichick and the Patriots are the type that are going to pick veteran leadership over a young rookie but by like week 10 and later on down the road uh who knows you know what i mean at that at that point it comes down to availability i think 
okay, so let's say, you know, they were they needed a, a win to make the playoffs and they barely made it. Do you bring in Mac Jones or do you still ride with Newton to get that win to go to the playoffs? Oh, for one win, I'm going Cam Newton all day. Um, because he's been there before. He's taken a team to the Super Bowl. Uh, I still am a little bit higher on Cam. Um, I think that if, in my opinion, this is my prediction, I think Cam, if he can stay healthy, will start the entire season and lead the Patriots to the playoffs. Now, the defense is a major part of that. The run game, it's not just Cam, but Cam can be the starting quarterback and the Patriots go to the playoffs, I believe so. Now, win the division, I don't know about that because Buffalo looks pretty good. Miami is going to be great on defense. We'll see on offense. Um, and the, I'm not too worried about the Jets. <laughs> um, I mean, what are your thoughts? What do you think of the Jets with Zach Wilson? How have they looked to you? Uh, losing Carl Lawson for the season is a big loss in the defensive line. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think he's what their their best defensive player possibly. And, yeah, uh, but uh, Zach Wilson has looked pretty good to me. But you know, at the end of the day, it's the organization and it's the Jets we're talking about. So they have to show people that they want to win before you know you really can even make a prediction on them because the last couple of years they've been pretty terrible. Yeah, and I, we can't go too crazy on the Jets. They have a rookie head coach that's unproven, and Robert Sala. They got a rookie offensive coordinator, and uh, what's his name? Mike LaFleur, Matt LaFleur's brother. So there's going to be some growing pains in New York. You got a, you're trotting out a rookie quarterback. So expect growing pains. Except, expect no playoffs this year and building towards the future. Do you agree with that? Absolutely, I do. So do you think Wilson has a productive year and proves that he can be one of the best quarterbacks out of this recent draft class? Yeah, I think he'll do good. I think he, like, good, not great, productive, not unbelievable. I think he'll do good enough to keep the starting job, uh, win some games, but I don't see them making the playoffs. I don't see him making a deep run. I don't see him winning the division. Uh, but they'll be competitive more, a lot more so than the last couple of years. And uh, Zach Wilson, I mean, there's reason to be optimistic in New York with a quarterback like Zach Wilson. He's got the arm talent, and it's all up to the upstairs, up to the mental to see how quickly he takes the next steps and gets better and better. I agree. And seeing how he deals with adversity when it comes his way. Yeah, and it's absolutely going to come. It's a tough division. And it's the NFL, you know, going from BYU to the NFL is going to be a major adjustment there. Um, the Bills, I mean, I expect the Bills to be, you know, they should probably, they should win the division. Um, they went to the AFC Championship game last year. Do you think the Bills can make a run and make the AFC Championship game again? Or will they take a step back? What's your thought on the Bills? I am pretty high on the Bills. I think they are the second best team in the AFC next to the Kansas City Chiefs. So why not have a rematch in the AFC uh, championship game between Bills and Chiefs? I could see that. I think there's one or two teams that could beat the Bills out. Look, watch, keep an eye on the Cleveland Browns. Uh, who knows? I mean, if the Browns go to the AFC championship game, that'd be crazy. And they were close last year. Um, keep an eye on the Steelers. I think they're going to be much improved. Um, Najee Harris is a huge addition uh, to balance out that offense. I think the Steelers are going to be very good. The Ravens should bounce back. And the Titans. Keep an eye on the Titans and maybe even your Colts. Yeah, I, I mean, it's going to be good uh, a battle in the AFC, but I think Josh Allen – Next to Mahomes is the second best quarterback in the AFC. That's the that's the whole reason why I'm going to go with the Bills. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hard to argue with that. Um, an old Big Ben. Who knows? A lot of eyes on Lamar Jackson this year. Been a lot of talk about maybe this is the year the NFL figures out Lamar Jackson. What do you think on that? I, I don't think the NFL figures him out. I, he's still an incredible weapon, incredible talent. How do you figure out that speed? 
I mean, I'm not no defensive coordinator or nothing, so I really can't <laughs> but let's just say Lamar is is elite and absolutely great at what he does. But again, I say this every year, he has to make improvements with his arm. Oh yeah. Every year. That's what that is what is holding the Ravens offense back, in my opinion, is his ability to make plays throwing the football because at the end of the day, it's going to come down to having to make that big third down and 14 or third, third down and 15 with your arm. Yeah. And they're saying like, you get the Ravens down early and force them to pass a lot trailing and they don't think they can come back from that. That could be the case. We'll see. But I've seen Lamar throw the ball pretty well. Remember that I believe was it a Monday night or Thursday night against the Browns when Lamar left because he had to, go poop or whatever and he uh he played pretty well in that game I mean he shows flashes of being able to throw the ball really well but we all think of him as just a runner I mean he's he's shown before he can throw the ball I think what we're looking for is consistency yeah uh it, it's consistency and throwing the ball under pressure uh under pressure when adversity is in your face now, looking at the AFC North, how do you see that division? Uh, ha- how do you see that uh, happening? Who's going to come out of that AFC North? Man, this is a tough division. You uh, threw, it, threw the question right at me here. Uh, <laughs> well, man, I'll tell see. you what I think. I, 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 think the, I think the Steelers bounce back and win the division. I think the Ravens bounce back and finish second. Maybe that's flip-flop, Ravens first, Steelers second. That's going to be a great battle. Honestly, maybe I'm a hater. I think the Browns finished third in that division. Maybe they still make the playoffs, but I still like the Steelers and Ravens ahead of the Browns. Am I crazy? I mean, I like Cleveland, and I think Cleveland's going to actually take a step forward instead of a step back. I mean, they have a double-headed monster at tailback, and they do. Odell Beckham. <laughs> Odell Beckham Jr. is going to be back. and Jarvis Landry. Yep. Keep an eye out on, you know, my boy Jeremiah Wusukormo. They're going to be tough. Absolutely. Um, it's going to be a very competitive division. Speaking of the bottom of that, what about the Bengals? How, Joe Burrow. Yeah. T. Higgins They're last right. year. Jamar Chase now. They got weapons. Uh, it's all eyes on Joe Burrow and Zach Taylor to to elevate that Bengals franchise, right? Absolutely. I mean, Joe Burrow was the man who's supposed to turn that franchise around. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your what's your confidence meter in Zach Taylor, their head coach? Uh, I don't know much about Zach Taylor, but I feel like he's a young a young coach who showed strides last year I mean the Bengals have gotten better so I think if they can put a better team you know give him better talent that he would be able to be all right in Cincinnati yeah and we all need to see a full season out of Joe Burrow before we make our judgment um yeah but that offensive line man is just terrible I mean I feel for Joe Burrow and you know I think that they should have went offensive lineman in this draft, instead, they went and got a receiver. Well, I don't think it's as bad as some people are saying. They did go get Riley Reed, uh, the tackle from the Vikings. So that does help. Um, I don't think they're going to be as bad as, as the narrative is around Cincy right now. I think, you know, maybe they should have gone Panay Sewell or offensive line. But any chance, I mean, any chance to reunite Jamar Chase with Joe Burrow, you – you got to take it right, and to go with T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. Um, what do you thought of Jamar Chase so far? He struggled not only in the preseason with some drops, zero catches this week in preseason, um, some drops in in, uh, in practice. The key for me is on the field. How does he look? How does he play? We're judging him on catching passes from Brandon Allen, not Joe Burrow. So. I want to see, you know, how the season goes, the chemistry developed between Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. I think the Bengals will be improved. Um, 
you know, I could see them winning six, seven games this year. Do you, do you think that they can do that? Yeah, I mean, I agree. Plus, Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow should have that chemistry, be, being that they both came from LSU. How do you help the quarterback and the offensive line at the same time? Run the ball. I know that Zach Taylor – is, you know, he's got the, the flashy quarterback. He's got the weapons. He wants to sling the ball all over the field. He comes from the Sean McVay offense. But let's pump the brakes on that. You got Joe Mixon, who's a hell of a running back. You got Samaje Pirine and uh, Trayvon Williams. Um, I would continue to run the – I would run the ball in Cincy and, you know, be balanced on offense. I, I don't care how many good weapons you have. I want to be balanced on offense. And that can maybe slow down the pass rush and keep Joe Burrow upright a little bit more. Do you agree? I agree 100%. And, I mean, the run game is always important. We've seen that, you know, take a factor with, with Ben Roethlisberger last year. So throwing the ball so many times, you know, it caused his, his elbow to eventually give out on him. Oh, yeah. I believe Ben Roethlisberger threw the ball like 70 times in that playoff game. I mean. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, now let's go to your division, the AFC South. Uh, how do you see the Colts and Titans matching up? Is a battle for the division. I don't think the Texans and Jags are much of a threat. Uh, how do you see Titans-Colts going down? you think they split the season series? Uh, who do you think wins that division? I know you're a Colts fan. Yeah, and I'm going to, you know, this is sports talk, so I'm going to, Completely take the bias out, out of it. Right. I, uh, I 100% think – I think that the Tennessee Titans are a better team. Mm -hmm. I think that they have a better offense. We obviously have a better defense, in my opinion. Okay. Um, so, at the end of the day, I think the better offense wins. So, Tennessee's going to win the division, but just barely. Well, you think the better offense wins over the better defense here? Yes. I mean, dude, A.J. Brown, Julio Jones, that's – how do you stop that's that? That's nasty. Now, I agree. Um, I think I think it's going to be a battle. I think it comes down to one game. You know, maybe the Titans go 11-6 and six and the Colts go 10-7, and seven, or the Titans go 12-5 and five and the Colts go 11-6, and six, something like that. Um, I still think the Colts make the playoffs. But it's all going to center around Carson Wentz. You've got to be super happy to see Carson both Carson Wentz and your guard, all-pro guard, Quentin Nelson, back at practice already. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're going to be ready for week one, if not week two. Yeah, I think you'll be ready for week one. The fact that they're back already, uh, they'll be good to go. Pat McAfee was all over that, saying that he doesn't think they're going to miss it any of the season and he was right um you know I expect as long as Carson Wentz is healthy he's got a great uh, uh team around him very complimentary he's got weapons he's got a line he's got running backs he's got a defense so Carson Wentz will have the best opportunity of his career to win and go you know go deep in the playoffs so we'll see uh, but the key your goal as a Colts fan has to be to win the division because you don't want to get in. Whoever gets in as a wild card, you got to play on the road in the playoffs. You don't want that. You want that home field. And uh, and so the goal should definitely be win the AFC South. And so I'm looking forward to a Colts and Titans duel all season long. Absolutely. And I just want to make everything clear for everybody. Keep an eye out on Jonathan Taylor, I think he's going to have one hell of a year. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, I think that that team over there in L.A., the Chargers, are going to be a way better football team than what people think they are. Well, getting a healthy Derwin James back for a full year, that's going to be big right there. Uh, what do you think of the Broncos? What do you think of the Broncos quarterback situation? Drew Locke or Teddy Bridgewater? Who would you pick? I would go with Teddy Bridgewater just because I think he's the overall better quarterback and has played better this preseason than what Drew Locke has. In what way? Because I think with, with Drew Locke, you've got higher upside, 
more turnover risk. With Bridgewater, you have lower upside, but he doesn't. He he needs to protect the ball better. Um, but if Teddy Bridgewater is going to turn the ball over at a at a similar rate or close to it, then you want to go with Locke, right? Yeah. So I mean, do you think they would be successful with a two quarterback system? I don't. I think that. Uh, you know, you want one of these two to, to take the job, and I don't think either has yet. Um, it's very split in Denver between Locke and Bridgewater. I think they're leaning towards Bridgewater, hoping that he can be the game manager, not turn the ball over, run, play run first, and, you know, just have Bridgewater do what he does. But if Bridgewater starts to turn the ball over or if he gets hurt, then you're going back to Locke. And I just don't know if they really have an offensive identity. Meanwhile, you've got weapons like Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy. And I just don't feel like – I feel like with weapons like that, maybe you go with the upside and Drew Locke. I don't know. It's a tough call in Denver. I mean, okay, but do you think maybe they should have made the choice to have went in the draft and got them a quarterback since there's all this controversy going on? There's a lot of talk about maybe they should have drafted Justin Fields. Um, I'm glad that they didn't as a Bears fan. I would have. I'm surprised Fields fell out of the top ten. If I was the Panthers or the Lions or the Broncos or the few teams that I would have considered taking a quarterback there, Denver chose not to, and we'll see if it works out this year. Um, Vic Fangio's job, I think, is kind of, you know, on – whether they can figure that out. What do you, what do you think of the Raiders? Um, John Gruden, Derek Carr, Henry Ruggs, uh, Darren Waller, Josh Jacobs. Um, is, you know, the big issue last year with the defense. Do you think the Raiders will be improved? I mean, you name off all them players. On paper, they have a pretty damn good football team, but – I can't say that they're going to be improved because they've had that same team and haven't proved anything to nobody. So, yeah, I mean, Raiders got to start winning eventually, right? They got Gruden, they got Carr, they got Mayock, they got Josh Jacobs. I mean, they need to start showing it on the field. They really need to uh, make the playoffs this year. I think all Raiders fans would tell you they need to make the playoffs this year. Yeah, and uh, I mean, so how much more longer do the Raiders, do you think, keep riding with Gruden? Is Gruden one of them coaches that is almost unfireable, or do they let him go if he doesn't show any type of improvement? I think they're going to stick with Gruden for the long haul. I don't think – I think Derek Carr will get moved before John Gruden does. And that might be a hot take. Um I think – so something to keep an eye on is if Green Bay uh, hits the reset this offseason and Aaron Rodgers leaves this next offseason, I think uh, there's been a talk about Devontae Adams going to the Raiders and reuniting with his Fresno State teammate, Derek Carr. Do you think adding Devontae Adams to the Raiders would boost them up a couple notches? Oh, absolutely. That's the best wide receiver in the league in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, so if the Raiders – so Gruden's not going before something like that. I think the Raiders are trying to make it work now, and before they give up on Gruden and Mayock, they're going to put a lot of money into this team and more weapons, and they're going to really go for it. So uh, I don't think you're going to see a rebuild or a, anything like that in Vegas for a while. They're trying to sell tickets. They're trying to get fans in the stadium. Uh, so it's going to be a big year and a big couple of years in Vegas for the Raiders. How about that stadium? Have you seen that? Uh, was it the dark, the the Death Star there in Vegas, the Raiders stadium? That's a, a must-see. I want to go see a game in that stadium this year. Oh, yeah. it's uh, It looks beautiful, man, like state-of-the-art. So we'll see what happens there. Let's go to the NFC. Uh, let's go to NFC East. Uh, Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. Prescott coming off a major injury. How do you feel about the Cowboys? Uh, is it all hinged around? I mean, it's all hinged around Prescott and Zeke. You think they have a bounce back year? 
Yeah, I do. And, I mean, I don't really see any other team in that division standing out next to the Cowboys besides Washington. Yeah. So, uh, I think it's really going to be Washington and Dallas. But I think Dak does come back and have a great season, barring no injury. So, let's just hope he, he can stay healthy because, I mean, he's already at training camp and having shoulder yeah. issues. Daniel Jones, man, he needs to take a step forward. The Giants need to show. There's no excuses anymore for Daniel Jones. He's got weapons all around him. This needs to be the year for the Giants. Do you agree? Yeah, this is absolutely a prove-it year. I wouldn't say so much for the Giants. i say this is all on Daniel Jones. The Giants are going to flow the way Daniel Jones flows. I mean, you know, this guy got drafted expecting to be the savior over there at their Eli's retired so it's all going to come down to what daniel jones can do absolutely yeah we'll see uh how the giants do what about the eagles what's your confidence in jalen hurts and the eagles offense i got confidence in hurts but the eagles overall for a team i think they finish last in the division and one of the worst teams in the nfl and then, so how do you think they get better uh, more weapons. Um, is Jalen Hurts a franchise quarterback? That's the big question. Is he a guy that you can make the playoffs with and go on deep uh, playoff runs, possibly contend for championships with? That I don't know. He's got a long way to go, in my opinion. I think we have to – he has to play more games for us to figure that out. Because remember last year, they were still trying to flip-flop between Wentz and Hurts. And he didn't really get show enough to be able to prove anything. So I think this year is going to be huge. Looking at the NFC North, uh, Bears, Lions, uh, Vikings, Packers. I mean, Packers with Aaron Rodgers back, Devonta Adams. Packers are going to be the favorites to win that division. Um, Vikings, I expect a bounce back year from the Vikings. I think Kirk Cousins has a better year. I think Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison is a solid one-two combo at the running back uh, if they can stay healthy. Um, you got Thielen, you got Justin Jefferson. Expect a big year out of Herb Smith Jr. Now is the number one tight end with Kyle Rudolph gone. Their defense, I think, should be better. Uh, I think the Vikings finished second place in that division. Do you? I mean, yeah, I'm going to have to agree, but Again, this is – we were talking about prove-it years. This is a prove-it year for Kirk Cousins. I mean, how many more times are, you know, we going to say he's elite when, when really he hasn't proved nothing to me? Yeah, I would never say he's elite. i say he's good, uh, but not elite, not great. Um, he His can win with him. shows that he's elite. Yeah, I know. They're paying him like he's elite, but I don't know about all that. Um, and uh, – do you see they signed Everson Griffin back, that defensive end? Do you see he had to apologize for those tweets calling Kirk Cousins' ass? <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> so we'll see. A lot of eyes on Kirk Cousins. He's got the weapons. He needs to go show it uh, in 2021. What do you think of the Bears, um, Justin Fields and Andy Dalton? I think it's looking like – I think they said today that Andy Dalton's going to be, be the week one starter. Uh, I don't expect that to last long. It wouldn't surprise me if Justin Fields gets thrown in week two, week four at the latest. Um, how? What kind of a year do you expect from the Bears? Playoffs or battling for third or fourth? I mean, I think that they're going to be battling for third. I mean, because I think that the Lions are just going to have a bad year because I don't think that golf is as good as he was when he was in uh, the Rams. But anyway... Uh, yeah, Justin Fields, from what I've seen, he looks like he's got what it takes. Yeah, I agree. It just, it just depends on when they decide to finally start him. But I, I think even as a rookie, I'm not predicting him to come in and lead this team to the playoffs right away. I think that it's going to take, you know, 2022 is the year I'd be all in and say, let's go. Let's make a playoff run. Let's see what we can do. 2021 as a rookie that's a lot to ask of a rookie uh, but we do have a solid defense in Chicago uh, it should be really good 
a really good run defense. It really hurts to lose Kyle Fuller, our number one corner to the Broncos. That really hurts. I think our secondary is going to take a hit. You know, I never liked the Trufant signing. I never liked the Dalton signing. I felt like this year should have been a let's go young and let's kind of retool, rebrand what we're trying to do here and then be all in for 2022. A lot of Bears fans had high expectations for this year, and I just don't see it. Um, and I think Nagy, Matt Nagy, the head coach, is trying to buy himself time. That's why he's starting Andy Dalton, and he's going to, you know, I think we're penciling those in as losses when Dalton starts. And, and Nagy's going to go back and be like, look, don't fire me after that. I need a full year with Justin Fields. And uh, so we'll see. Nagy should be on the hot seat, but you never know in Chicago. Um, the Fields draft maybe bought some time for these guys. And uh, we'll see how they look. But I, I'm encouraged about Fields, you know, his upside. Um, let's feed David Montgomery. Let's get, uh, you know, let's see how Fields looks throwing the ball to the starters like Allen Robinson and Jimmy Graham and Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet and those guys. Um, I think the Bears will be good, but do I see them in the playoffs? No, I do not. I think they're battling for third place. And I agree with you 100% on the Lions. Uh, Jared Goff was struggling in L.A. with Sean McVay, an offensive guru, and with weapons all over the field. Now he goes to Detroit, and I don't think he has the same weapons. He doesn't have the same offense around him. And uh, let me go ahead and say this right now. I think Dan Campbell was a terrible hire. Do you agree as head coach? I actually like Dan Campbell, man. He seems to bring the fire. He brings the fire, but I don't think it's going to translate to wins. I, he brings, like, energy and fire, and he, he has his way about him. I just don't think it's a winning formula. You know, you're talking about the Lions who have a long history of losing and they're in a tough division. I don't see them. How many wins do you see the Lions getting this year? Uh, I, I, I was going to say about six. I think that's being generous. Really? I can see it. Yeah, I think five and 12, four and 13. I don't think it's going to be a good year in Detroit. Maybe uh, I'm a hater because I'm a Bears fan. So you can call me that if you want, fans. All right, so now let's do the NFC West. Uh, very good division. Uh, the Rams add Matthew Stafford, who's an upgrade over Jared Goff. Uh, you add Stafford to Sean McVay's offense, those weapons around him, and that defense. Sky's the limit for the L.A. Rams. Would you agree? I think this is even bigger for Matthew Stafford because, you know, there's always been talk like, well, Stafford has been held back by the Lions and stuff. Well, now he really has no excuse but to win a playoff game and make the playoffs. Yeah, the pressure's on him because he's got to win right away. Uh, but I think that the Rams will be better off. You know, Stafford is an upgrade. Um, and they're going to be, you know, but the pressure's on. I'm very interested to watch this Rams team all season long and see how they respond to the pressure. The Super Bowl expectations, they've got the defense for it, number one in the league last year. One of the big losses, though, is losing running back Cam Akers for the season. Um, I'm surprised they haven't gone and signed anyone in free agency like Le'Veon Bell or Todd Gurley, are you? Yeah, I thought that they would have went out and got Gurley back, but I've been wrong. In my opinion, they should. Yeah, I agree. They should, but, uh, you know, we'll see if they what they do. Daryl Henderson now is banged up. I, I saw he got hurt a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I think the Rams should be on the phone and going and getting someone, one of these free agent running backs. Um, but, yeah, sky-high expectations for the Rams. Um, and they should be the favorites to win that division. Now, the Seahawks are uh, right there. Um, they won the division last year. Russell Wilson is happy with some of the moves they made in the offseason. Um, do, do you think Seattle 
uh, as a contender coming out of that division? Seattle is always a contender as long as they have Russell Wilson, in my opinion. I agree. And DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett and those guys. Um, I need to see more of a running game out of Seattle, whether that be Chris Carson or DJ Dallas or one of these guys, uh, Rashad Penny, need to step up and, and carry the, the number one running back role. Right now it's a running back by committee. Um, and the defense needs to improve, bringing in guys like Akella Witherspoon and guys like that. So we'll see. Um, one of the biggest surprises to me is that K.J. Wright, the Seahawks' longtime linebacker, uh, isn't there, isn't, you know, they haven't been – made any signs like he's coming back and he's still sitting in free agency. How surprised are you that KJ Wright doesn't have a team right now? Yeah. I mean, a great player, but I think eventually as it, as the season goes along, all these players that we're talking about will eventually get signed. Like, you know, Gurley, KJ Wright, Le'Veon Bell, somebody's going to better. For them. Yeah. They better. They need to, they're deserving. They're, you know, great athletes. Um, so look out for the Seahawks. I'm looking forward to another year of DK Metcalf, seeing what he can do. Um, the Niners, how? what do you think of the quarterback situation in San Francisco? Jimmy Garoppolo or Trey Lance? Who would you start week one? Jimmy G, absolutely. It's his okay. job. To it's his job to lose. Um, do you think Garoppolo, if healthy, and a healthy defense and a healthy entire 49ers team, can they put together a 2019 type season and make a Super Bowl run? Or is Garoppolo going to hold them back? What are your thoughts on that? So you're saying a 100% healthy Garoppolo, right? Yes. Oh, absolutely. They're going to have a campaign like the 2019. In my really? opinion, they're the most underrated team that needs to – that people need to keep their eye on. I think the 49ers are going to be good. Well, from I mean, on Twitter, there's some Niners guys that cover the team that say Jimmy Garoppolo is a backup quarterback at this point. They say he's not any good. They're, they're advocating for Trey Lance starting week one. You think that's crazy? Yeah, I mean, come on, man. I, I like Jimmy G, and, you know, I, I'm not going to say he's a bad quarterback. He took him to the Super Bowl two years ago. How can you just say that he's not a good quarterback? Yeah, but a lot can happen in two years. Uh, even when healthy, even when on the field last year, he struggled at times. He makes some poor decisions at times. Uh, his upside is definitely good enough to go to the Super Bowl, but consistency. And, uh, you know, we'll see if he can do it uh, for a full season. Um, I don't think Trey Lance starts week one. I think they're going to start Jimmy G, but it wouldn't surprise me if they pull G or bench Jimmy G either to injury or performance midway through the season and Trey Lance gets his opportunity. Now let's look at the Cardinals, Kyler Murray, Cliff Kingsbury, <clears throat> a team that some thought had Super Bowl expectations. Uh, their fans did at least. Uh, missed the playoffs last year, couldn't beat the Niners or the John Wolford Rams. Do you see a bounce back year from the Cardinals? Do you think the Cardinals can make the playoffs? See, this is one of those hard ones. Again, it it depends on Kyler Murray. And, I mean, you know, Cliff Kingsbury obviously making the right play calls. Yeah, they've got the weapons. They've got DeAndre Hopkins. They've got uh, A.J. Green. They've got guys. Um, you know, Christian Kurt. So they need to get more out of the team. They need to make a playoff run. Cardinal fans are going to be upset if they don't make the playoffs in 2021. Uh, and maybe Cliff Kingsbury is the fall guy. Uh, I agree. They need more out of Kyler Murray. They need more consistency, more protecting the ball. But uh, the potential is there. And if Cliff Kingsbury can't unlock it, then they need to get a head coach who can. You know, I think you give Kyler Murray a head coach like Andy Reid, and he is doing a lot better at this point. I, I put a lot of the blame on Cliff Kingsbury for not only play calling, 
and game, you know, situational management and stuff like that, but uh, developing the quarterback. And I think that Kyler Murray might need a better head coach to get the most out of him. But Kyler Murray has to take some of the blame as well. Yeah, and I mean, do you think Kyler Murray is as talented as we all thought he was? I mean, because he really hasn't shown it lately. I think he is. I think that he he can. I think he can put it all together, but he needs, you know, he needs to do better. He needs to be more consistent. Um, he's undeniably an athlete. He's fast. He can, you know, break a 40, 50-yard runoff at any point. He can throw any you know, throw the ball as far as anyone. He can throw the ball from any arm angle. They just need to figure it out. And I think a lot of it, the play caller, quarterback, head coach relationship needs to be on point. And I don't think it's on point in Arizona. I think that's an issue in a lot of places in the NFL. Uh, the right play caller for the right quarterback goes a long way. Do you agree? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so... That's why, you know, like a, your guy, like Carson Wentz and Frank Reich and Indy has a chance to really make it work. It's all about chemistry and uh, all the pieces fitting together. That's why the what, Bears ha haven't worked with Matt Nagy. Go ahead. What about their defense? How do you think J.J. Watt's going to do? I mean, you know, ideally you'd rather have J.J. Watt 10 years ago or five years ago. But he's a solid veteran leader who's been there before done it all before he'll be great for the locker room uh hopefully he can stay healthy and and put up numbers on the field and and be solid on the field he's going to be great for the young guys and the cardinals have a decent defense an up-and-coming defense um <clears throat> but i think they should maybe be a little bit patient they're they're wanting to win now they're wanting to win the playoffs now this might be the toughest division in football and I, don't, I just don't think they're ready to take that step to make the playoffs and win in January yet. Uh, they might be a year or two away. So we'll see. But preseason week three, right around the corner. Um, a lot of roster cuts coming up. And the season only about three weeks away. So can't wait. Thanks for coming on, Dustin. Good content as always. I got one big question for you before we uh, get off here. All right, what's that? Do you think that this was the last time we will ever see Tim Tebow in the NFL at all? Yes, 100%. Did he only get his chance because it was Urban Meyer? Uh, yes. <laughs> all yes right. and yes. I just um, wanted to hear your take. Yeah, you look at the film. I mean, he looked terrible playing the tight end position in preseason last week. Um, I don't think it was ever going to work. His best chance to play tight end was back when he got his quarterback opportunity the first time a, a few years ago. Then you take all that time away from the game playing baseball, and you're just going to come in and play the tight end position at an elite level, at an NFL level. That's not going to happen. Um he had his opportunity at quarterback. Some say he didn't get a fair shake at it. You know, that's up for debate. But I don't think it was ever going to work at tight end. And uh, it's it's ridiculous to think that a guy that's been playing baseball for three or four years is going to come in off the street and play tight end in the NFL. That was never going to work. I, it was it was cool to see it, him get an opportunity. You know, he sold some jerseys. Some fans showed up to cheer him on but it was just never going to work out and that just goes to show you in the NFL it's about who you know not always about talent it's about relationships and the Tim Tebow Urban Meyer relationship is why he got that opportunity in my opinion but I'm not going to hate him for it you know it just didn't work out I just wanted to hear what was what's that I just wanted to hear what your take was on that situation. Yeah, and I'm interested, you know, I think Tim Tebow will be a great an analyst on TV. Should go back and do college football uh, like he did before for ESPN and all that. But uh, he's not an NFL player anymore. That ship has sailed. He's not really a baseball player either. So 
I look forward to seeing him as an analyst, and he's got a lot to offer in that regard. So nothing wrong with that. Yeah, maybe a uh, future guest. Yeah, maybe a future guest. Maybe a few. Maybe a coach, a football coach at some point. Maybe he can go start it off in college. Maybe go back to Florida, be a quarterback coach or or something like that. I could see him doing that. Yeah, I would. So. All right. Well, appreciate it. Thank good stuff as always, Dustin. And uh, appreciate the support, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. We got a couple episodes coming out soon. Uh, stay tuned. Peace out.